What is cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, CVST, and what are its common symptoms? The announcement of pausing COVID-19 vaccine for a period of six months due to formation of cerebral venous sinus thrombosis in some patients got us thinking, what is CVST and how it is indicated in our body? Besides this, we've got a lot to share about this vaccine and why it has caused CVST. So, stay tuned to the video and ring the bell icon for more interesting content. Firstly, let me make it clear that almost 30 million doses of J&J vaccine have been distributed at official levels in U.S., and 6.8 million people have received the dose. However, cases that are reported to have developed CVST are 6 to 22 in number, and their ages range from 18 to 48. Wide majority did not get any side effects, but there are still some possible risks associated with this vaccine. What are these risks, and what do you need to know? We'll try to cover all your questions in today's video. What is cerebral venous sinus thrombosis, CVST? CVST is not very common and affects only one person out of 5 million people. In U.S., CVST affects 5,000 people in a year. On average, CVST is responsible for 0.5% of strokes. CVST targets venous system that is present in outer layer of our brain and is located directly underneath the skull. When a clot is formed in the venous sinus of our brain, it can block the blood supply to and from the brain, and hence our brain is not able to drain the blood towards the heart. Ultimately, hemorrhage is caused due to internal bleeding. When this process is undergoing, you might feel severe headache, numbness in arms and legs, seizures and a blurred vision. Other symptoms include confusion, coma, and trouble speaking. Symptoms of CVST are similar to stroke. Does vaccine really cause CVST? Since CVST can also happen normally in population at almost the same rate, that means if normally CVST occurs once in 5 million people every year, it should be no surprise that 6 out of 6.8 million people were diagnosed with CVST after having a vaccination. However, there are no significant evidences which show the link between CVST and COVID vaccine. It is also suspected that these blood clots might be caused by the virus itself or near the time of vaccination. Also, WHO have stated clearly that there is no link between vaccine and CVST. Dr. Galliet Satos, professor at Johns Hopkins Medicine, while addressing the same question, said that there are many other risk factors that are associated with CVST, and some people are genetically prone to getting blood clotting disorders. Also, people who had CVST after vaccination were having low platelet counts. This also means that CVST is more likely to affect people who are already having some kind of blood problems, like anemia, low blood pressure in brain, and medical conditions like severe obesity. Pregnant women are also at a higher risk of getting CVST due to their other health complications, like varying blood pressure and gestational diabetes. Women with higher levels of estrogen in their blood after pregnancy, or those who are taking contraceptives, are more likely to develop CVST. To conclude, CVST is not something that a normal individual should bother about. However, people with already compromised immune systems or blood disorders can develop this condition. In short, risk factors for developing CVST after vaccination are advanced age, pregnancy, or post-pregnancy hormonal imbalance, blood disorders like anemia and low platelets count. What are the symptoms of CVST? CVST is indicated by symptoms like shortness of breath, headache, fainting or loss of consciousness, seizures and loss of movement in certain parts of the body. However, common side effects of vaccine should not be confused with CVST. Common symptoms of vaccine are chills, fever, nausea, pain in muscles, and fatigue. Headache that lasts for more than four days and formation of bruises around the site of vaccination has been associated with CVST. If this happens to anyone who has got vaccinated recently, an immediate medical help should be called. 
Although these symptoms are quite different from CVST, there is still a need for diagnosis. Let's see how CVST is diagnosed. Diagnosis of CVST If you've felt any of these symptoms that we've discussed so far, you should immediately call 911 and get an emergency treatment. There are more chances of recovery if CVST is diagnosed at an early stage and treatment is started immediately. As far as the diagnosis is concerned, it is done by using lab techniques like venography, angiography, CT scan, MRI, ultrasound, and other blood tests. Through these tests, doctors can see how the blood is flowing to the brain and if there is any internal bleeding from cerebral veins. Doctors might also see a swelling caused by pressure coming from blood clot. A detailed physical exam and medical record is also needed to diagnose the CVST. Treatment of CVST Treatment of CVST is done by using a number of different treatment options. Initially, anti-seizures medication are given to prevent the seizures. Body fluids and blood pressure is also monitored throughout the treatment. Medications like heparin is used for blood thinning so that the blood clot gets dissolved. If that is not enough, blood clots are removed surgically. Antibiotics are administered when there is presence of some bacterial infection. Physicians might also check your eyesight and ask if you have headaches during their general observations. Afterwards, medications that prevent clots in blood are also given to prevent further clot formation. What are the chances of recovery in CVST? Chances of recovery in CVST are high, and recent estimates show that 86% of people who were diagnosed with CVST had recovered. According to another estimate, 7 out of 30 people with this condition could not survive. How to prevent CVST after vaccination? If you have recently got vaccinated, there might be chances of developing CVST especially if you are having low platelet counts. It's better to check your blood count test, or CBC, and see if your platelets are less than 150 or 200. If that is the case, you need to increase your platelets through nutrition. Eating fruits and vegetables that boost your immune system, and particularly your platelet counts, are recommended. Avoid smoking or alcohol after three weeks of getting vaccinated, and take care of yourself. If you're diabetic or hypertensive, there is an exclusive need to manage both these conditions. If you're getting the treatment for CVST from your hospital, you need to be careful for at least three months and avoid certain foods like those high in saturated fats. Doing exercise every day improves your blood circulation, and hence there are reduced chances of getting a blood clot. This video was to answer some of your FAQs on side effects of COVID vaccine. But information that you're getting from the internet shouldn't stop you from getting vaccinated if your doctor tells you to do so. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, don't forget to hit the like button and leave a comment on your concerns about COVID vaccine. Let us know if anyone in your family has developed this condition after getting vaccinated.